medicine and living life by conscious design. Dr. Mary Alexander is a naturopath, certified lifeline practitioner, and mother of four. Please help me welcome Mary Alexander. How is everybody? Is everybody having some good time at all the booths and everything? Yeah? Good. I'm having fun too. This is my first time doing uh, this particular expo. But um, let me ask you a question. Who knows what this is? It's for the horns. <laughs> That's this. What's this? I love you. This is I love you, right? In American Sign Language. And so for the next 30 minutes, this is going to be a journey of love. Sounds kind of corny, but I think I'm speaking to the choir here. If you're in this expo, you might be kind of on board with the concept of love, right? I hope so, anyway. So not only love, but of understanding and appreciating uh, the role that our mind plays, right? This is mind medicine. The role that our mind plays in the health of our body and in our relationships. So the way that we perceive things. Because who's heard of Dr. Wayne Dyer? Anybody? <laughs> right. So he's actually had lifeline sessions from my mentor uh, before he passed, which is incredible. But he said, when you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. So life really is all about perception. So this is going to be uh, a little bit interactive today. I hope nobody minds. Um, let me ask you guys, did anybody wake up this morning and raise their hand and say, today is an amazing day for diarrhea and constipation? <laughs> <laughs> No? No one? No takers? No. How about, oh, today's a great day for an 8 out of 10 migraine. No? No one. Okay. How about, um, I would love it today if my business could struggle just a little bit. No? I would love my mayor. I would love a huge fight with my spouse. That'd be fantastic. I'd choose that. That'd be great. No. Okay. You see where I'm going here, right? Does anybody choose any of these things? Cancer? bipolar disease, depression, profound sadness. Would any of us choose these things on any level? No, right. But these things are happening to every single one of us in this room, right? These things are happening. I woke up with a cold. <laughs> Fantastic, right? I haven't been sick in eight years. <laughs> Fantastic. I did not wake up this morning and say, I love some inflammation in my sinuses. That is not something that I chose, but nevertheless, here we are. We don't choose fear, sickness, inflammation, or addiction, right? In the lifeline technique, which is uh, what I practice, we say hell no to all of these things. But what part of us is broadcasting? What part of us is broadcasting this experience and bringing it into our lives? So I don't like to do anything without intention. I really believe in intention. So my intention for this 30 minutes, 25 minutes, is to help you, to help all of us, take the perceived crap of our lives, pardon my language, the perceived crap of our lives, and to transform it into fertilizer that can help us to grow. So rather than judging my sinus issue that I'm having right now, rather than judging the cancer conversation in your body that you have, rather than judging depression, no, none of us is broken. Right? We're not made wrong. We were all perfectly designed to heal. None of us is missing anything, okay? So we're gonna look at this as a conversation, an opportunity, okay? To observe and to learn and listen to those programs and those reactions that are very, in a very interesting place in our minds called the subconscious mind. Have you all heard of the subconscious mind? Okay, good. So, and then to be able to have a conversation with this subconscious mind. What would it be like if we could actually talk to this below the surface part of ourselves so that we can bridge the gap between where we are and where we want to be? So a little bit of brief history. Um, my name is Mary Alexander, as she said. Um, I'm a naturopath and I'm certified in this technique called the lifeline. And I'm so passionate, it's my biggest passion in life, is to educate people and to empower people about this power that we have within us, the power that we have in our life to choose, to choose, with our heart's deepest desires leading the way. So the lifeline is a 16-step system. It is a system that shifts those fear-based patterns that we have in our subconscious mind, and we shift them with love, okay? So it's actually a combination 
uh, a lot of different modalities. We have a lot of um, amazing practitioners over in the expo. Um, Lifeline combines elements of the five element theory of Chinese traditional medicine. It has elements of the chakra system, acupuncture, Ayurvedic medicine, color light therapy, epigenetics, neurolinguistic programming, even some um, chiropractic and especially the electromagnetic field of the body. It takes all of these incredible modali modalities. Because what I find is people who are in this holistic world, we're collectors of tools. You know, being like, oh, I think I'm a Reiki master too. Like, I'll do that. And I, there's so many tools that I've collected along the way. This combines 16 different modalities into one flowchart, into a blueprint, which is a roadmap to our subconscious mind. And it helps us to understand the relationship that our mind has to our body and to the stress in our lives. So in the lifeline, we use this hand mudra of I love you, and we combine it. Who's familiar with the work of Dr. Masaru Emoto? Anybody? He wrote a book on water consciousness, right? So the words infinite love and gratitude uh, are very high vibration words. And we combine this hand mudra with the words infinite love and gratitude. We use that as a universal harmonizer. So while we're here, if you see me go, infinite love and gratitude, everyone go, infinite love and gratitude. This is play along, everybody. Go infinite love and gratitude. Okay, perfect. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> so along with muscle reflex testing, has anyone here ever been muscle tested before? Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> we use this to have a dialogue with the subconscious mind and the programs to get buried there. So when our subconscious programs get triggered, it causes us to actually react in a maladaptive way. We can't fully adapt to the present moment. We can't think clearly. Our conscious mind just gets tripped up. We can't logically approach anything. Who here has ever flown off a handle? Mm. No, no one here. <laughs> right, just like the certain inflection in somebody's voice, uh, a certain smell, anything. For me, I, I used to get triggered by um, the sound of a vacuum cleaner because it took me right back to a moment when I was five years old uh, and my mother was like OCD vacuuming all the time. It just, it always uh, gave me this sense of anxiety. And so as an adult, when I would hear this vacuum cleaner sound, I would automatically get triggered and go back into this reactive pattern in my mind of anxiety. I could actually feel it in my stomach. Does anybody have an experience like that where just a smell or a sound or someone's voice can just trigger them, even a color? It's incredible. So we all want to be healthy, right? So we're on this health spectrum. And I love muscle testing so much because in, in Western medicine, in order to find a, a diagnosable pathology, you have to be at, four, at least 40% below optimal function, like a blood test, in order for something to show up. We're already at 40% below optimal function. With muscle testing, it can detect dysfunction at 1% to 2% below optimal, which is incredible. So far before, something shows up in a blood test or where, you know, a dun -dun -dun, a diagnosis of X disease shows up, which is why I love muscle testing so much. So what does muscle testing have to do with the mind? Well, the body's potential for healing is all up here. Our mind is the placebo. You guys know Dr. Joe Dispenza? He wrote that book, You Are the Placebo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love him. It's the answer, so let me talk about this for a minute. The conscious mind is are, uh, it's the tip of the iceberg. If you think of the part of the iceberg that is above the water, it's just the tip, right? And it's two to 10% of our brain. Our conscious mind is where all of our executive functions are. You all chose to be here today. You chose the seat that you sat in, and you chose to come to this expo. You consciously made the choice to buy tickets, all of these things. But most of us, most of our brain is automatic. It just reacts. It's 90 to 98% of our brain. For example, there's something right now that's, there's a program running right now that's digesting your breakfast or digesting your lunch without you having to constantly, consciously think about it, right? Nobody's saying, okay, stomach parietal cells, secrete that hydrochloric acid now. Like no one's <laughs> consciously thinking about that. There's a program going on in your body right now that's keeping your heart beating in your chest, right? And some of these subconscious programs are fantastic. I mean, the subconscious, it orchestrates the healing or the degeneration, depending on the program, of every single one of the trillions of cells in our body. It's really fascinating. There's so much going on. However, who here, okay, so who here, you're all familiar with muscle reflex, reflex testing. Okay, who can be a volunteer 
just so that I can demonstrate it for those of you who have not. Who wants to just she wants it. Sure. <laughs> I just want to demonstrate quickly how easy it is for even a word to trip us up into a reaction of fear. Okay, come on. Okay, so first of all, is anything wrong with your left shoulder or elbow? No, you're good. Okay, so I just want you to take it and tuck it in like this. Hold your elbow to your body. And this isn't a wrestling match. Okay, I'm just going to push down and just resist. Okay, so hold stop. Perfect. So say out loud, love, love, love. Love, love, love. Yeah, hold stop. Perfect. I'm pushing down. And she goes into a lockout. Okay? Say out loud for me. Fear, fear, fear. Fear, fear, fear. Good. Hold strong. Are you ready? Say fear, fear, fear. Fear, fear, fear. Hold strong. There's just, there's nothing. There's nothing. I mean, are you trying? Yeah. I'm, okay. <laughs> so it automatically, she wants to hold strong. She wants to hold strong. However, you can't out logic a subconscious program. We're programmed to get neurologically weaker in a state of fear. Even the word, okay, we don't want to be like that. Just say love, 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 love. Okay, hold strong. She's locked, okay? Thank you very much. So, <laughs> she did it. <laughs> so it's when we're in the present moment, right, that we can consciously choose. If we're in the past, Who's ever laid there in bed at night and their mind just starts to go? And they're in, they're in the past. We're in regret. We're in guilt. We're in shame. Oh, I shouldn't have eaten that sixth piece of pie. <laughs> Whatever it is, right? And if we're in the future, we're normally uh, in anxiety or worry or what if or all we're imagining all these crazy scenarios that haven't even happened yet, right? We're literally being psychotic and imagining something that's not even real, and then we have this phys physiological response to it. So what Lifeline does is it actually raises our awareness of our awareness. So in order to talk about this, we need to define stress for just a minute. So and my, my kids, they just love me. Whenever they say, oh, no, I'm so stressed out, I have four kids uh, ranging from age nine all the way up to 17. My 17-year-old son does not like to do homework. <laughs> Anyone relate to that? So, <laughs> yeah. And I, I kind of, you know, don't get it, but it's like, your life would be so much less stressful if you just did the work. Um, so he likes to say, oh, mom, I'm so stressed out in algebra. And I always say, Ethan, go outside, and I want you to take this bucket, find me some stress, and bring it back to me. Can you do that? And he, he, he's heard this. He's lived with me long enough to know that mom's just playing mind games with him. Because it doesn't exist anywhere. You can't do that. Where does stress live? It's right between our ears, right? So you can't find stress anywhere except for up here. And so what happens when stress occurs, it's really just our inability to adapt to reality. It's our inability to adapt in the present moment. And when this happens, it changes our pH in the body. Um, it affects the subtle flow of energy in our body. We become acidic, and when we become acidic, when our pH gets crazy, we become inflamed. And so inflamed is that four-letter word, the other four letter word of itis, pancreatitis, sinusitis, right, tendonitis in the elbow. It's all those inflammatory things. And then that persists and we form adhesions uh, and we form scar tissue. And the interesting thing about scar tissue is that energy does not, it doesn't conduct any electricity, it doesn't conduct any energy. And so then we start to get really uh, some degenerative things like Alzheimer's and dementia and all these things. And then that disease, dis-ease state, creates more stress. And so now we're in this downward spiral. Like the stress caused all this cascade and then this is stressful, so it just keeps, and now we're in this like same, you know, what different day type of life, which is not fun. So, but stress is really just our perception. And oftentimes, most times, always, we don't perceive the truth. We do not perceive the truth. We only perceive what we believe and limiting beliefs is limiting our perception. So here's the key. We can access, we can access our mind's subconscious, our mind's consciousness, and connect, we can connect through muscle testing to the energy that connects all of us. So we all in agreement in this crowd that there's energy that connects everything in here. Okay, good. Some people are like, energy, that's a scary word. Okay. And we, whatever. we can shift uh, the stress that we have into growth. It's really possible. I suffered from panic attacks 
for the time I was 12 years old, just completely would hit me out of the blue. If anyone, anyone ever had a panic attack in here? Yeah, they just come, you, you don't know where they're coming from because you're unaware of what's going on below the surface and they just, whoo, it's, like it's like a baseball bat that just knocks you over and you can't breathe and you, I can't tell you how many times I've been to the hospital convinced that I was dying, like convinced, like take my, check my heart, check my enzymes, let's go, my cardiac enzymes, I know I'm dying, like I really thought I was dying. And I am free of that, free of that, because I've processed what's going on in the, you know, below the surface, in the subconscious mind. So now my body has changed. Uh, I don't get triggered by the same things. My perception has shifted. So I found meaning, I found meaning in the perceived suffering of my childhood, right? So your system cannot heal or learn under stress, but we can learn to respond, respond, responsibility, the ability to respond. We can learn to respond to these reactive parts of ourselves with love. Shifting perception immediately, immediately creates a change in the body. If you, I don't think anyone in here has been to my booth, but I do, um, I'm doing these little 20 minute uh, quick sessions and without fail, every single person, I'm at, I'm at fear right now, eight out of 10, and we have a little session and I'm like, okay, what are you now? Zero. How is that possible? Shifting fear with love is what we do. So I want everyone in your mind, you don't have to share, Everyone connect to your body right now. Just become aware of your body. Think about your skin. Go in a little deeper. Think about the fascia that's keeping your muscles together. Think about your muscles. Think about any little tweaks and twinges, aches and pains you've got going on. Think about any major diagnoses you might have in your life. Maybe your body's talking to you that way. Connect to your digestive system. Connect to your sinuses, connect to your spine. How straight are you right now? What's going on in the discs between your spine? Just mentally connect. And now connect to the stress of your life. And you'll notice that immediately certain people, certain situations, certain circumstances, who did you do what, who did you, how did she say that, and all that stuff that we say in our head over and over. Connect to the stress. And because Lifeline is non-content, nobody has to come in and speak about their, air their dirty laundry or speak about their skeletons. We don't want to perpetuate the same story that people are living in. People love to talk about their stories, right? What I'm interested in is the emotion. So as you connect to your body, and as you connect to the stress, the, st the pain and the fear, the stressful circumstances of your life, what is the first emotion that you feel? You don't have to say it out loud. Just keep that in your head. I'm going to play along too. I'm feeling, I have an anxiety if I really connect to it. And so I want to appreciate, or for you, appreciate the level. How intense is this emotion? So let's rate it. Zero to ten. Zero is, it's not even a blip on your radar. Ten means death would be better. You'd rather die. That's really good. You'd rather die than have to experience this emotion for another minute. Okay, so in your own mind, get your emotion and then get your number. How do you rate it? I'm going to rate mine at a four. Everyone got it? Okay. So here's the question. Would you ever consciously choose this? No. I think we've already well established that. No. So now you can remove judgment, because that's oftentimes what we do. We lay in bed and we feel angry about something, thinking. We feel angry about something, and then we judge ourselves for feeling angry. Like, oh, I should just be grateful. That's a thing I hear all the time. But everything is so great, I should just be grateful. What judgment? We can automatically remove judgment, okay? Take the judgment off of your shoulders. This is coming from a non-choosing place inside you. It's coming from the subconscious mind, that place that does not choose, okay? So what in the world, where, what is this What is this programming that we have? And I'm gonna talk super fast. Okay, so we have the brain. Here's some science for you really fast. We have the limbic brain, you all know the limbic brain, the emotional brain, okay. So when we, perceive an overwhelmingly emotional experience, usually in childhood, okay? Our limbic brain is activated into a hypnotic state, deep in our limbic and reptilian brain. It's called T minus one, and it stands for trauma minus one millisecond. We have a, we take an imprint, we take a snapshot of exactly what's going on, but the subconscious doesn't miss a beat. It takes a snapshot of the color, 
the smell, the sound, the everything that is going on at that moment of trauma, and it backs it up for just a second so that you can survive. Because when we're kids, we don't have the consciousness to survive, to, to process all the crap that's going on around us with all the adults, right? This occurs instantly. This occurs automatically. There's no choice about it. So when, you might know these as your triggers, right? So whenever you uh, perceive something similar to that, so similar senses to that original experience can activate, it does activate that reactive pattern, right? This is, we literally become hypnotized, where this is the means of survival. It happened so that you could survive, which, congratulations, your subconscious did its job, you're all here, right? You all made it. However, we're no longer five years old. Right? I'm no longer with my mom who's OCD, who's crazy if I don't keep my room squeaky clean. I'm no longer there. So then why am I reacting like this? Right? I'm no longer five. But my brain doesn't know the difference between the past, the present, and the future. It literally doesn't know. So there we go. A limiting belief a maladaptive stress response is activated, and it shows up in your life as what? As the emotion that you just rated for yourself. That's how it's showing up. And since this is not protection, because you're no longer five, this is awakening. This is awakening. Right? There's two roles in the subconscious mind. The first one is protection, the second one is awakening. This is a past part of all of us that has been like a beacon. It's been a lighthouse calling you home to the actual truth. And it's it's conversing with you through the symptoms of your life, the painful the painful emotions of your life. So what time is it? Because I was gonna actually have a time. Okay, I think I have a couple minutes. So Let's just connect. So for example, okay, uh, being bullied at age six, right, on the bus, imagine all the kids in, in this world who are being bullied, right? So now at age 35, maybe there are these huge patterns of anxiety. Or uh, age three, you witnessed your parents fighting, okay? And what, are, what does that do? Now you have this emotional imprint of anger that, you know, gets triggered. Even, even patterns carried on, carried down through the DNA. It doesn't even have to be your trauma. It could be generational trauma. Think about families who ancestrally have gone through slavery or genocide, and that is now carried down. And those reactive patterns of uh, feeling unsafe or loss of will is now imprinted in us and carried down. Think about the moment of your conception. What was your mother's relationship with your father? What, was, what about the moment of your birth? Did your mother feel humiliated or shame or loss of control? Or All those things are little thumbprints little imprints, and over time, all of these programs get, we get imprinted so much between conception and age 10. So much, and when they show up later in life, there's all these, all these limiting beliefs and limiting perceptions about ourselves. So, how am I gonna wrap this up? I was gonna do a little demonstration. You hold, by the way, you hold these limiting beliefs in our chakra system, energetically in our chakra system, so let me just test with the group. Give me that one, yes, we Okay, so in this room, everyone go infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. So in this room here, I do, I, by the way, come to my booth, I have a free group session online um, every, the first Monday of every month, and I, you know, can muscle test for the group. In this room, collectively, all of us, because we have a collective consciousness, right, we have a, a, a limiting belief in all of our uh, solar plexuses, that is to our self-esteem. Right, that's where for all of us we have uh, a limiting perception about ourselves, but none of us would choose this. When we get triggered now, none of us would choose to have our self esteem bottom out. Nobody would choose that to forget and be hypnotized and forget that we have value. So, another fun thing we do is we find out when was this program put into place. We call this an original occurrence. And this happens a mass consciousness in humanity. So, I'm just going to check and say, yes. So, there's a concept in this room of an original occurrence. Is it conception? Is it conception five? No, six, seven, eight. So in here, connect to yourself at age eight. First of all, everyone will infinite love and gratitude. <laughs> infinite love and gratitude. So at the age of eight, all of us were in an emotionally reactive environment. Okay, so is this water? So everyone will infinite love and gratitude. We find a reaction and then we raise this consciousness by taking love there. Infinite love and gratitude. So we're in the water element. So that means at the age of eight, all of us were in an emotionally reactive environment that caused the people around us to think and speak and, and behave in a way that could not model for us self-esteem, self-worth. And when we get triggered, we forget that we have value. And we lose our self-esteem in some situations. And since this has a water element tied to it, 
We lose also the ability to go with the flow. We forget that we are 80% water. We're in tune with the water of this planet. We forget to be in the flow of our lives. It's just crazy because none of us, none of us could choose this. So, okay, everyone, I want you to connect to yourself as a wrap this up in a bow. Everyone, connect to yourself at age eight. Just get a mental picture of yourself at the age of eight. Connect to all that was going on at age eight. And I just want you to see that eight-year-old self, I want you to see their third chakra glow in a beautiful yellow. That's the color of the third chakra. Just see that energy flowing. I want you to let that eight-year-old past part of you feel worthy for the very first time. Let them feel like they can just breathe and be in the flow of life for the very first time. You know about that? So, I'm going to wrap it up. That was literally a 30-second snapshot of what is normally a 90-minute uh, event. However, intention is nothing without an action step, right? So here's your action step, your self-love action step. So my mission here is world peace through inner peace, okay? So I want you all to be part of that. Take my card, send me an email, not so I can get something from you, but so that you can join me on this raising the consciousness of the planet. Just do the free um, group of sessions, okay? The more people that we can help to raise their consciousness, just the more of a chance that we have, guys, as, as humanity, okay? So I am so grateful that you all took the time to listen. I'm so grateful to be part of this expo. And I hope you all have a great afternoon. <laughs>